I'm joined now by Dr. Pumberger and Dr. Hughes, who will tell me more about surgical strategies and pitfall of adult spine deformity. Very welcome, gentlemen. Nice to have you here. Tell me, gentlemen, what's the most common strategy for treating adult spine deformity? Traditionally, the most common strategy involves fusion or reconstruction, where we use instrumentation to put the spine back into balance. The challenges, however, with this technique is that the solution can lead to other problems. And one of the things that we're trying to figure out through research is how to prevent what's called proximal junctional kyphosis or failure, which is one of the biggest complications which leads to additional surgery uh, in these types of patients. Adding uh, just from the medical point of view from the patient is that these surgeries are long procedures, very invasive procedure and carry a very high risk profile by itself. So the procedure itself is dangerous and the outcomes, they vary a lot depending uh, on the indication, for example. So is this a top topic in this Congress? Well, I think this is one of the most important spine topics with, within the conference. So spine being part of, of course, orthopedic surgery, but we deal with some of the same challenges because we're dealing with bone and connective tissue and um, trying to understand more about the biology of those structures is important as far as long-term strategies to improve outcomes. And what complications can occur and how to manage them best? One of the biggest problems that can occur after spinal reconstruction in the setting of adult deformity specifically is proximal junctional failure or kyphosis. And this is where the soft tissues or bone uh, at levels that have not been instrumented fail. And this can happen in the immediate postoperative period or it can happen uh, years down the line. And, and what that does is it, it leads to additional surgery, which is not only expensive, but it's high risk for the patient to, to, to go through yet another uh, revision operation. Our research traditionally is focused on making sure the spine is in the appropriate three-dimensional alignment, but the next wave or kind of future direction of this research is better understanding the connective tissue or supportive envelope around the spine. And so one of the things that we discussed at the conference today are, are kind of future developments uh, in this area. So moving beyond just uh, x-ray measurements and alignment, but further understanding things like collagen degradation, muscle mass support, and other connective tissue supports within the spine. And this is what uh, connects all orthopedic fields. It's not only the mechanics that was uh, driven or was driving the, the research for the past decades, it's now biology. And the interplay of biology and mechanics will hopefully solu uh, be the solution uh, for many problems in orthopedic surgery. How do you think treatment options will develop over the next few years? Well, one of the things that we discussed today and many different people around the world are working at this is to better understand the spine support structures, uh, meaning uh, the soft tissues and muscle interplay with the bony elements of the spine. Once we develop a way to communicate this spine support score, for instance, we can then develop therapeutics or have therapeutic targets to hopefully mitigate this problem that can develop after surgery. And, and ideas that potentially could serve as therapeutics would be uh, recombinant parathyroid um, hormones or other, other growth factors that potentially could improve the support structure before and after surgery. So why is this topic for you personally interesting? So to me this topic is interesting because it's one of the major issues in spine surgery, especially in the deformity field, the complication rate is very high. And dealing with those complications and those patients is um, not very rewarding, to be honest with you. So at the end of the day, we want to improve our patient care, and it is important to further investigate how we can preoperatively work these patients up and uh, see what we can improve with these patients or in this patient population before actually performing surgery. This is um, really a key topic that's, of course, personally interesting to me and, and other you know, spine surgeons, but as uh, Matthias said, I mean, this is a very relevant topic across all musculoskeletal care. So I mean, we're dealing with it from a spine perspective, but these same issues are at play in other you know, trauma fields or in even joint reconstruction. So I think this is universally uh, interesting. I think in spine, we have a unique opportunity to study it because uh, the spine is more sensitive to these forces that are at play in the other parts of the body. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Have a safe flight home. Thank you. And a lot of fun at the Congress. Yeah. <laughs>